Hey, Kamosa International. Welcome back to another video of Kamosa Interviews Local Employers. My name is Nina Poljak. We have a really a great interview following this video, so please stay tuned. Today, we have an amazing employer we're talking with today. Uh, we have Hamilton Mack, a sales manager from the Pacific uh, Football Club here in Victoria. So welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Nina. It's uh, great to be here. Great talking to you guys. Uh, can't wait. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. You know, I'm sure you're busy um, and let's get this awesome interview on a roll. So why don't you start off a little bit, maybe telling us a little bit about the club and what you guys do, some of uh, the events that you have. For sure. Yeah. So we're uh, Pacific Football Club, but uh, English football, so soccer over here. Uh, we play in the Canadian Premier League. So uh, we just finished our second season coming into our third. So there are eight teams in the league. It's professional soccer, uh, which uh, Canada never had a professional domestic league, which we're one of the only um, developed nations that didn't have one. So it was kind of a, a glaring gap in the, uh, the sports system in this country because it's such a huge participation sport and we didn't have a pro league of our own. So that's what the, the idea of the CPL was. And so we, we're Pacific FC, we're in Langford, we play at West Hill Stadium, soon to be Starlight Stadium. Uh, we had a very successful 2019 where we could play at home and have everyone in the stands. Uh, 2020 was a bit more difficult. We played a, a bubble season where all of our players went to PEI and played. And now we're just looking forward to, to getting back to normal and maybe having some people in the stands this year and going from there. That is awesome. Well, sounds like you've adapted pretty well to given circumstances. I'm actually very surprised to hear that Canada never had that. Like, that's something that's very surprising to me. I think a few years back, I read that soccer or football mm -hmm. is like the is the third uh, most played sport in Canada in summertime. So that's yeah, it it just keeps going up and up. And the thing about uh, soccer that is advantageous to hockey, which obviously hockey is, it's, it's so ingrained in, in this nation, but to play hockey and like my mom can attest to this, it costs a lot of money, right? Like all the gear, all the, everything that travel, it's, it's, it's an expensive sport. Whereas soccer, I mean, you just get a ball, you get anything that's ball shaped and you can play. So it's, uh, that's why the, the participation numbers just keep going up and up because it's so accessible to everybody. That is awesome. I agree. Soccer is fun. It's simple. You don't need much. You know, my European roots tell me I have to like soccer, so <laughs> right on with that. Um, so before your role there um, as sales manager, um, if I'm not mistaken, you were a Kamosan student and now a grad. Uh, right. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience at Kamosan and what program you took? I was in the sports management program at Kamosan. So I originally I went to school to uh, UVic and then I finished UVic. Uh, and I did my political science there and then walked out and thought, the heck am I doing now? And then I heard about this uh, program at Camos the sports management program. And I went to just an info night that Gord Ingalls was there talking about it. And I was sitting there going, oh, yeah, this this sounds more like what I want to do. So I uh, enrolled and then I graduated in 2018. And it, uh, it was a great experience. And, and I'm where I am now because of it. That's awesome. So speaking of where you are now and where you were and how you got there, um, you talked about the sport management program. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience in the program, how you found it? Um, what I often tell some of my students is that it's kind of business more than sports. Is that mm -hmm. something that you can speak to a little bit about that? Definitely, yeah. Well, I found it through another guy that I played uh, football with in high school, actually. He was enrolled at the time. And then his mom had like posted something that my mom saw on Facebook. It's just one of those like just chance she saw it. And then I went and checked it out. And yeah, it, it is it is a nice balance of business and sport. And a lot of stuff, you know, I learned some of it in some of the classes I took at UVic. But learning it at UVic, it was very, you know, cut and dry. Whereas learning it at Camos and it was like, oh, here's it applied to something. Here's it applied to sport, which is something that like just makes way more sense in my mind as someone who is passionate about sport that it was like, oh yeah, okay. Now when you're learning this, you can see why I'm learning it, not just learning it for no reason. 
So it's, it's a very great program in that sense, in, in that you're applying your learning to something real world. I'm really glad that you bring up that because that's one thing that Camosun has tried to always encompass in their program is the applied learning. Like we want you to go be able to find a job after to be successful in your career. And while you're in the program, you know, we have steps to kind of help you along the way. And one of them is an internship. So I believe uh, you had the opportunity to do one, right, with Camosun? I did, I did. Um, so that was, uh, I guess, in my last semester or second last semester, uh, while I was at Camosun, I did a an internship with the uh, the Harbor Cats baseball team in Victoria. So, and it was it was through another connection from Camosun that uh, it was Kelly Mann who was running the BC Games Society at the time. And so I went to him and talked to him, and he's like, "Hey, I don't have a job for you, but you know, over there at uh, the Harbor Cats, they might have a co-op for you." So I went and talked to them, and then. Just through chatting with them, they said, yeah, we'd, we'd like to have you on to do a co-op. And then at the end of it, they were like, hey, why don't you stay on and work? And then my boss, uh, who was the GM there at the Harbor Cats, when Pacific FC came to Victoria, he got hired at PFC. And then he gave me a call and said, hey, I want you to come join me. So that's how I ended up here was through my co-op. Well, that's amazing. Well, there you go. Yeah. I think you're kind of the case that, yes, co-ops do actually work. And Without a doubt. Without a doubt, right? And I'm really glad that you brought up that connection piece. Uh, Victoria, as I'm sure you and I both know, and that some of our international students are just learning, is that it's a networking city. So yeah. that co-op, or that's our internship, was probably so important to you to get to know some key players and some employers mm -hmm. that you can now connect with. And Obviously, your boss really loved you because he, <laughs> you could come with him. So. I'm not sure why, but yeah. <laughs> Take it, right? Take one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe he saw you on the field and he was like, okay, he can just do more than he can do more than sports management. He can actually play, you know, something well, like that. <laughs> I like to think so, but uh, I don't know if that's the case. But no, you're, you're totally correct. It's it's the connections in Victoria. It's it's so small. You're never, you're never more than one degree of separation from another person, really. You ask someone if they know that person, and yeah. And then even more so when you get into the sport world, the sport world is even more condensed. So, I mean, I was just, uh, I was singing happy birthday over FaceTime to the guy behind me here, Fonzie, Alfonso Davies, a couple weeks ago, because our head coach at PFC played with him at the Whitecaps and he's friends with them. So this bizarre experience is that you get to know people in the sport world and, and it'll open doors to, to other people. That's amazing. Like, mm -hmm. like, how cool is that to see it in action, though? Like, it actually does happen for people and you are, I can attest to that. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, you also have international students working there, right? Um, we do, yeah. That are your colleagues. Yeah, well, we have, so I was a, a graduate of the, the program. Uh, our ticketing manager was a graduate of the Camosun program. Uh, one of our sales reps was a graduate of the Camosun program. Um, our kit manager, he's the international student. He was from Brazil and he was a uh, graduate of the program. And then we even have a former uh, employee. He did like social media and, and that sort of thing, marketing for us. And he's now working for a South American company that is kind of like a zone, like they do uh, streaming sports but just a, uh, like a South American company that does it. And so he got hired because they wanted a Canadian person, someone who knew soccer and North American soccer and everything, but who could speak Spanish. So he speaks Spanish. So if you're, if you're a Camosun student, it like take advantage of your electives, right? Take something that maybe you don't know anything about. And even if it's something that you're like, well, I'm in sport, that has nothing to do with sport. You never know what comes back to help you in the future. That's amazing. Well, you look at, yeah, wow, I should get your whole team together. That's what we <laughs> do. And I'm like, hey, guys, talk about Camosun, right? What's your experience? That's amazing. You got a core, little core team there of applied learners right there. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so with that, okay, so sports management, you know, you we talked a little bit about it. What does the employment opportunities look like? Aside maybe from working, you know, at the Pacific Football Club, what are some of the opportunities like what avenues do you think people can go into like some jobs it's it's tough at the moment of course with with covid because there's so many jobs that and companies that have just had to lay off a lot of people 
right? So I, I just met with um, the Sport Victoria Tourism this morning, and they were a team of about 70 a year ago, and now they're a team of about 12. So there's tons of roles that just right now don't exist. And even in our club, uh, it's not that they're not valuable and coming back. It's just at the moment, they don't exist. So you just... The thing with sport is, and how I started with um, PFC is I got in as the retail store manager. So the retail store, it has, again, like nothing to do with sport on the surface, but when you're working in sport, you're, you're doing, you're wearing so many more hats than just the one. So I was working in the shop, but really I was doing so much around the club. And then I moved from there to managing the team on the road, right? It just, it goes like that. So like when you're in sport, you find, go where the opportunity is, whether that's in a different city or a different, say, if you're, you feel like marketing, but it's, it's more of a, a sales type job, right? Get your foot in the door wherever you can, and then you'll make your way to eventually where you want to be. Well, I really like that you pointed out that, you know, you started in one position, maybe not so related, but it helped you and it helped you move into the position that you are at today. So I think if correct me if I'm wrong as well, that, you know, taking that sports management program still helped you prepare for multiple roles. So, and then it can kind of have help you funnel it down. And when we do have jobs available, in the next few years, Kenosha will have, you know, lots of graduates and our our labor market is changing. So lots of baby boomers will be retiring. So hopefully we'll create those jobs. But I really like what you said about starting, just starting somewhere and then moving your way into your position that you really want to be in because that's how you're going to succeed. So yeah. I really like that, that you spoke to that. Well, and a great point that you just brought up too is that the the labor force in sport right now is skewing so young right everyone that i deal with not only in our own club but clubs across our league the top of our league leagues across the world that i deal with i mean every it's it's young like some of those senior positions are obviously still held by you know older employees who have the experience but they are getting older and and those positions will be available and just more and more positions will become available underneath them moving forward. So it's a good time to be, you know, graduating and getting into the field. Absolutely. And like you said, it's internationally known, like your colleagues mm -hmm. are working worldwide. So your program credentials are recognized internationally and worldwide. So that's, that's amazing. That's really great. I feel like, you know, you can have a lot of opportunities that way. Maybe you feel like moving, maybe you want to try out a different country and that credential can also follow you. So that's, that's really great. What would you say are some kind of tips for uh, current students and then coming on students and then graduates that are interested in a sports management program? Well, like I said, I mean, take advantage of what Camosun offers. So if it's electives, take advantage of those. Don't just be like, oh, I heard this one is super easy. It's an easy A. You don't have to go to class even. Like, okay, you'll get you'll get a, a, a grade on your on your transcript there, but what are you really getting out of it? And when there's co-ops available, take those, right? Like look at what, what, how it helped me. Mm -hmm. um, when there's opportunities, like uh, when I was there, we hosted the, the volleyball nationals, you know, go volunteer for that. Cause it's a thing when you see, like that's what makes Camosun so great is on a resume, it's not Camosun graduated this time, it's Camosun and then co-op here, volunteered in this, like worked at this PSO, did this, like, but you know whatever it is it's just you see that and you go oh they have experience and that's what Camosun does is it's education it's it's knowledge and experience and that's what they blend really well that's amazing and with your co-op can you tell me a little bit about it like did you feel like you got your like feet wet like did you feel like you got a lots of experiment experience with it like do you feel like that's something that you can be like wow I actually did a lot there and I learned a lot for sure for sure. And that's and, and getting your foot in the door. That's the, the whole thing was that the job itself. I don't even know what the title was. It was just like whipping boy for for, you know, uh, lack of a better term, because it was just like there's so many different jobs you have to do in sport. And oftentimes it, you don't have a huge team to do them unless you're, you know, the Real Madrid's or the Manchester United's like you don't have 
huge team. So I got in there and that was my first real job in sport. And then I got to see firsthand, yeah, like, hey, today you're going and picking up an ex-pro ball player and you're taking care of him for the weekend. And it was like, oh, okay. And then the next day, hey, we need someone to rake the field. Oh, okay, I'll do that too. Like, it's just, it's everything in between. Wow, that's very diverse. And I think I have like a lot yeah. of pressure to have me responsible for like a player for like, I like, I have to entertain you for a week. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no pressure, we'll have fun. Oh, that's really great. So with that and your role now, can I ask a little bit about your role now? Like, is that something that you still do? So, I mean, it's still, it's still many hats and still whatever is needed, you just, you go do. Um, but right now what I'm, I'm mostly in charge of, so I, I manage the uh, like corporate partnerships. So our different businesses around town with advertising and, and how we work together with, with a ton of different uh, stakeholders here in town. Uh, and then I manage the season tickets. So it's, you know, like finding new season tickets as well as just keeping up with the fans and especially this past year that has been super important and something that we've been trying really hard to do is communicate with our fans because mm. everyone is as confused as everyone else and sometimes like we'll call people and say hey like how are you feeling they'll go do you guys think you're going to play and we'll have to say you know what like the last year we're like I, I really don't know and they go hey that's all I needed to hear right so it's like that's a big part of uh sport because without fans there there is yeah, no sport yeah. right <laughs> they bring it right yeah exactly and then and then there's the the merchandise side of it as well so we sell all of our jerseys and other merch and, and then marketing and, and whatever else comes projects that just slide across your desk and it's now part of your job <laughs> that's amazing well it sounds yeah. like it sounds you know yeah you're you're in sport and it is sport but it does sound yeah. a lot like you know like you have a business you're responsible yeah. for a lot of the business aspect of it and i'm glad that the sports management program can offer you that so definitely that's really amazing and you've been there what i think two two years you said now yeah just over two now yeah great. great well what are the predictions for this year can i ask about yeah. yeah yeah we uh our commissioner he just came out uh this was a few weeks ago and he put a statement out uh saying that we have a tentative start date of uh may 28th and then we're planning on playing in each other's stadiums uh so it'll be 14 cpl matches this year uh and then it runs till uh, about mid-October that's tentatively it could uh, change especially with the vaccines and how you know it's been pretty positive news the last few weeks that it might get uh, pushed a bit so instead of starting end of May we might start end of June that way we just have a better chance of being able to get our season ticket members into the uh, stadium so they can enjoy it live that is awesome and maybe you know we'll have some Camosun uh, students in there cheering them oh we'd on. love to see yeah. some Right, we're gonna have commotion signs. Be like, I saw Perfect. you on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna have a fan base. So there oh, we go. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate your time and you know sharing your experience about commotion. Uh, we really do want our students to understand about commotion our programs, and it's always nice to talk to an alumni that's been there, done that, and can attest to the you know co-ops that the program, the courses, like you said, take it you know, don't slack off, take some interesting courses, get in there, do the co-ops. So really, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. We appreciate it as a college and I'm sure our students as well. So I'll hopefully be talking to you maybe again in the whole group of alumni that you have there. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to, to be here and to, to talk to you and the students and I really enjoyed my time at Camosun and it really helped me. So anything I can do to help okay, current students and future students. Then. Yeah. One last question. Did you play on any teams on Camosun, at Camosun? No. Just right. no. We're going to close with that one. I know. We're I know. Put you on the spot there. I cheered, I cheered for the Chargers plenty, but I wasn't on the court for anything. That's okay. You're cheering him on like you are now, right? You're a big exactly. business guy. You make it all happen. So, that's really good. <laughs> and uh, if anybody, if there's any students who you know want to chat further, they can always reach out, and I'd be happy to discuss anything with them. Awesome. I will make sure uh, to let. Them, well, now they know actually. So that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much, and hopefully we'll chat soon. Perfect.
Perfect. Thank you. Thanks.